Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Queen Taramina's on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. This week, we got... um. We continue our um, coaching um, coaching carousel here on the podcast. We start off this week with the coach of the Troy Athens Red Hawks, Coach Tom Cook. Coach, thank you for calling in this week here on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I listen, uh, listen uh, avidly. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so thank you for thank you for the invite. Um, when you look at Troy Athens historically, I mean, like this team's been. You know, last few years, I mean, you guys changed offenses, but when you look at last year's team, um, briefly recap last year for you guys. Yeah, it was a, a, a year where um, we did a lot of growing and learning. Um, like you just said, we had um, some change, not just uh, offensively, but defensively. Um, you know, the uh, being the second year, like for our staff, um, like the first year we got the job a little bit late, like in the spring. And so, um, you know, we, we tried to, uh, make things comfortable for the kids. And then last year it was kind of an overhaul, uh, both offensively and defensively for, you know, what we wanted to run. So there was a lot of learning going on, um, but a lot of growth took place too. So we're, we're excited to where, uh, that's going to lead us like hopefully this year. Um, when you look at, at when you look at, um, the changeover of course, going to a wing T offense, I mean, a lot of people at, at Troy in Troy, you know, obviously that offense has been like, you know, it's a misdirection offense. So where did you learn the wing T offense from? Um, so uh, there were several people on our coaching staff that have run it in the past. Uh, we were looking just kind of like where we wanted to go as a program. Um, and uh, we like to think that, you know, we're, um, you know, we're, we're we've got like a bunch of tough kids um, that are hard nosed that'll uh, like to hit you. Uh, and so, um, you know, that combined with the fact that, like you said, um, it is like a misdirection offense. Um, and so like when we do run into, uh, teams that might be a little bit bigger than us, uh, you know, there's a few things that you can do with, you know, um, when you're outsized, um, and one of them is, you know, uh, make people, uh, guess where the ball is. So, um, so that was, that was some of the thought process going into it. Um, we're looking to expand a little bit this year and, and hopefully, um, you know, uh, add a few wrinkles that people might not expect. Um, let's talk about some returning players. I mean, obviously a lot of people look at Nathan, obviously he's been, you know, I've been seeing him on Twitter a lot, you know what I mean? What this offers. So talk about, you know, some of the others, you know what I mean? That can make some noise for you guys this year. Yeah. Um, we have, uh, past couple of years, we've been, uh, kind of young at certain positions. And I think I'm hoping that this year we'll, we'll see kind of the, uh, some of the fruits of like, you know, developing some of those young players over the past couple of years. Um, you know, we have a strong, uh, strong core of seniors, um, you know, uh, Elliot Booth, uh, Corbin Crum, um, Elliot's been with us for three years now. Um, Alex Bobian, uh, um, uh, is another one, uh, that's been, you know, here since he was young. We also have like juniors, like you mentioned, which, um, you know, like you, you already mentioned Nathan, uh, this will be his second year, uh, on varsity. Um, uh, Kanan Hanbury is, uh, um, somebody else that this will be his third year on varsity. Um, he, you know, started for us as a freshman. And, um, you know, to top it all off, we have, uh, uh, Anthony Dunlap, you know, back for like basically as a senior, his third year, um, you know, uh, as, uh, as a varsity player for us. So we've been young in the past. Um, there's a lot more, you know, we've got, uh, we're strong up front with, um, Jose Moreno, right. This will be his second year, uh, hopefully starting for us. Um, and, uh, um, like I said, hopefully we'll start seeing some of the fruits of, you know, being young over the past, uh, past few years at certain positions. And when you look at, of course, um, you know, you guys here, I mean, like any other like impact players that newcomers that can make some noise that that's really gotten your eye this off season. 
Yeah, um, uh, we have um, uh, Grayson Conrad. Uh, he's been um, he's had like an impressive summer at some of the seven on sevens that we've had. Um, uh, we have Writer uh, um, uh, Reese, um, who uh, is just a uh, a ball of energy. He's uh, going to be playing, you know, varsity football for the first time here at Athens. Um, and then um, we've also had um, a few other kids, uh, you know, uh, coming up that were sophomores last year. Um, we've got a, a fight at quarterback right now, but um, Andrew Dunlap, Anthony's younger brother, has uh, really looked impressive at times over the summer. And that's the battle that I've been wanting to look at is the quarterback position. Obviously, Last season, um, how has the quarterback battle been going for you guys? Um, we've got kids competing, right? And that's, uh, that's the big thing. We want kids to compete for, you know, the positions that they get. Um, right now, that's, uh, that's a pretty popular one um, that, you know, kids want to um, try and win over. Um, like I said, we've had some kids uh, look pretty good this summer um, in some of the workouts and seven on sevens that we've been at. And um, like I said, Anthony, uh, or excuse me, Andrew Dunlap is one of them. Um, and then when you look at, um, of course, you got the skill positions, you got the, um, when you look at Athens, um, obviously from a depth standpoint, I mean, like what is, you know, obviously when you, when you run the wing T, you know, depth, I mean, like how's the depth looking for you guys? Um, that's something that, uh, uh, you know, we, um, you know, we talked about as well, like, uh, I think running back will be a very deep position for us. Um, we're hoping that, um, you know, some of the line positions, um, we can find a little more, uh, depth there, like on, uh, on offense tight end is a, a position that we seem to have, um, you know, several kids that, uh, could play for us, um, and uh, like I said, I think with with those positions covered, you know, that's another reason that you know, we uh, we really like you know our uh, our growth in this offense. And then, of course, defensively, I mean, like, how's the defense looking for you guys? Um, defensively, uh, like I said, another uh, just like the offense, another year uh, in the system, um, and you know, we're looking uh, strong, like in our. Uh, defensive secondary, uh, you already mentioned Nathan, uh, I mentioned uh, Elliot and Grayson, um, Alex will be in the mix, um, uh, Stephen Lazat uh, has looked um, pretty good in our, uh, in our secondary um, in, in limited play this uh, during the uh, seven on seven stuff that we've done. Um, linebacker, uh, we're going to be very experienced at linebacker. Like you said, we've got um, Kanan, who's, you know, this will be his third year starting for us as a junior. Um, and then, uh, we have another, or we have a strong, uh, core of linebackers, you know, including Corbin Crum, um, Tom Gilai, uh, you know, those are also guys that have played for us in the past are coming back. So, um, up front, we might be a little young, uh, defensively, um, but, uh, skilled nonetheless, we've got, um, you know, some kids that are going to fill some gaps there. So, um, so yeah, uh, defensively a lot, like offensively, we're, you know, we're, we're deep at certain positions and like hoping for some kids to step up at others. All right, let's look at your schedule now. Obviously there's one team that I really want to talk to you about that. I know that a lot of people in, um, in Troy Athens, like, um, don't like, and that's Troy. So talk about your feelings and your thought process about the rivalry with Troy. Um, I think, uh, it's a healthy rivalry. I think, um, you know, uh, this year we need to focus on going into that one in particular, we need to focus on like what we, uh, need to do like, in the game rather than, um, trying to kind of, uh, you know, compare ourselves or, um, or really, uh, you know, um, put them at the forefront of our thoughts. Right. Uh, we want to make sure that like we're at like our team and what we need to do is uh, at the forefront of like, you know, how we prepare and what we're doing for that week. Um, and I think, um, 
you know, hopefully that mindset will, uh, will yield better success. And then let's look at your schedule. Of course, you're in the blue this year. Um, we're going to briefly talk, we're going to go your non-conference first. And, um, I'm looking at that non-conference and I'm going like, you got Clarkson's on there. I mean, like, you know, talk about, break down your non-conference schedule in your, um, in your eyes, coach. Yeah. Um, like our schedule, uh, is over the past few years have just, uh, been, you know, uh, getting tougher and tougher. And we, uh, we like that. Um, you know, uh, if, if we want to end up, um, going where, you know, uh, where we want to go as a program, uh, we need to, we need to make sure that we're, you know, playing the toughest teams that we can, that, uh, we can find. So, um, you know, you talk about, like you just mentioned, Clarkston, uh, is, um, you know, is, is a you know good opponent for us. Um, you know, uh, Frazier is going to be a good opponent for us, uh, near the end of the year. So, you know, our, our schedule, you know, uh, over the past three years of, you know, uh, if you take a look kind of overall has gotten, you know, tougher each year, but, um, that's something that we kind of embrace and, uh, really like, uh, actually as a, as a program. And, and then you guys play Berkeley as well. I mean, like obviously yep. on there, that should be a really interesting matchup considering, you know, they, what they've been going through. So talk about in your mind about Berkeley a little bit. Yeah. Um, Berkeley, like they're going through a lot of change just like we did a couple years ago. So, um, you know, uh, we don't, we definitely, I know that they've uh, struggled the past few years, but we are definitely not overlooking Berkeley. Um, you know, it's early in our season, so there's going to be like limited, uh, you know, film, you know, on them. Um, I also know that they just got a, a new athletic director over there. Yep. Um, Matt Rollick, uh, who, um, you know, is, is somebody that, um, uh, I've, I've known for a long time. Uh, and so I'm guessing that, you know, uh, his impact on the athletics over there at Berkeley are going to be huge, which means I know that they're going to be prepared and, and ready to go for us. So, um, uh, so no, like, like I said, our, you know, um, any game out of our division, um, you know, is, is a tough game for us. And so, um, we're gonna talk, but again, we, we like it. We're going to talk your division here in a minute here. I mean, obviously we're going to break down the division here. Of course, you guys are in the blue this year. Um, let's, I want to, I want your open up the year with Seahome. Um, what's your thought process playing them week one? It's kind of a very interesting <laughs> clash offensively because Seahome runs severe and you guys run the wing T, you know, it's gonna be a lot of running in that game. Yes. Um, I, uh, I guess I would guess if things go, uh, go to plan that game, it'll be a very short game. Um, that's for both sides, but, um, but no, like, uh, I think that's an interesting, like you said, it's an interesting matchup for us. Um, we do get, what's nice is we get a little extended time to prepare, like knowing that we, uh, you know, uh, have faced them a couple of times in the past and like, aside from, any type of uh, massive change on their end, um, you know, we we know what uh, we can expect, like offensively and defensively from them. So um, they're a tough team every year. So uh, and you know they got the better of us uh, last year uh, at our place. Um, you know, and so it's a it's a matchup that you know we're looking forward to. I'm sure, like you know, I'm sure they are as well. Um, and so uh, that'll be that'll be a good test for us. Um, you know, uh, at the beginning of the season. Um, let's talk um, Farmington here. Talk about your what's your mind on thoughts on Farmington. Um, Farmington uh, is someone we so we didn't play them last year with the like reorganization of like the um, the divisions. We played them a couple years ago. Um, they're a very talented team. They're um, a multiple offense, so um, you know they can do a lot of things. Uh, a t another team just like Seaholm, but for different reasons, that's tough to prepare for. Um, and, um, and again, like, uh, like I said before, um, our schedule, like this year from last year, um, you know, uh, got more difficult and Farmington's a big reason why. Um, North Farmington. Yeah. Um, that's another one there. Um, you know, they, uh, last year, um, they were, uh, a little up and down, but, uh, that was a hard fought game, uh, at their place last year. 
um, and we know that they're you know um, they're looking to improve uh, themselves this year as well. So um, you know there's not going to be any weeks off for us. Um, you know, uh, like I said, even the teams that we played last year, I don't want to discount. I want to keep on saying that our schedule, you know, uh, has gotten tougher um, and that, that we like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, it also has to do with uh, teams, you know, uh, that we did face last year are going to be much improved this year. Like teams like North Farmington, teams like, uh, you know, Berkeley, like you mentioned earlier. Bloomfield Hills, you know, I mean, it's another one, Evan. I think that could be a really interesting matchup for you guys playing them. Of course, Bloomfield Hills, a team that, came down from the what I mean they're in the white to the blue so that should be a really interesting matchup as well yeah um we had a little bit of that uh this year with like you know uh, a couple teams like shifting around um and they're used to playing some you know uh, some tough schools so um you know they're gonna uh they're gonna come into that week um you know uh ready to go and um uh and prepared uh, the coaching staff over there is is uh, fantastic, um, and uh, we you know we uh, I've worked with some of those uh, some of those guys over there, and um, uh, they're uh, they're great. So um, we're looking for a, a tough matchup every week this year. And then you got Oak Park. I mean, like Oak Park's a team that um you know I mean like they they could be very scary this year when you look at them. I mean, last year they played a lot of sophomores, a lot of freshmen. Um, what's your thought process playing them? Yeah, um, Oak Park uh, is an interesting one for us. Like, uh, I, I, you know, look at them a lot like us. Uh, last year we played them like to, you know, uh, um, you know, to overtime, and um, you know, uh, you know, we ended up losing by, you know, just uh, uh, the skin of our teeth uh, there um, at Oak Park. Um, in a tough fought game. And I know that they're, you know, they are uh, improving as well. So um, I'm looking for another tough one, you know, against Oak Park uh, to come down to the wire again this year. And then we, and then of course, the last one, I know we talked about this one earlier is Troy. Um, Obviously, I know the kids are going to be geeked up for this game. And I know that, you know, so in, and we talked about this earlier and um, what is your thought process of, getting your team ready for the Colts when you play them this year, um, over at Troy. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's one that the kids look forward to every year. Um, uh, like I said before, um, our mindset going into that game, like, um, I think, um, if, you know, a few years ago, uh, you know, we were, um, we were focused like, you know, a lot on, you know, a lot on them, like they, you know, they were coming off like a, you know, a nice season and, um, uh, you know, building another one, you know, and then, uh, you know, the kids start to focus a little bit on like, well, let's, you know, we have to beat them. We have to beat them. I think our, our mindset like needs to be, you know, more focused on like what we need to do, right. Um, to win a football game. And so, um, you know, it's a healthy rivalry, like the, you know, um, uh, the kids, you know, like you said, are going to be all geeked up for it. Um, we need to make sure that we're, you know, thoughtful about how we prepare and, you know, make sure that we are doing the same things that we do, you know, week in and week out, you know, for preparation for football, for a football game and, um, to prepare ourselves to win. And then let's bring up a course. Let's talk about the um, community aspect. Of course, you got a new principal in there in Vernon Burden. Um, how has the relationship been between you and um, Mr. Burden? He's, he's been fantastic. Um, you know, he's been incredibly supportive. Um, I'm not taking anything away from like other principals that we've had here because they've been fantastic as well, but, um, you didn't see them at, you know, at practice, uh, you know, as often, um, you know, uh, you didn't see them, you know, in the hallways, um, you know, and, you know, talking football with football players. Um, so he's incredibly supportive. Uh, like he, you know, is a, um, you know, a big resource for us for, you know, growing the program, um, like with his experience and just his relationship with the kids and the fact that, you know, uh, he knows like what a, um, what a great experience being part of a football program can be for, you know, for a young person. So, um, 
he's been fantastic. Uh, I can't say enough about uh, about Mr. Burton. And then let's talk about um, the new logo and the new field here. Obviously, um, the the Red Hawk got a little bit of an upgrade this off season here. Um, obviously, talk about the um, changes, the new logo and the new turf stadium, new turf field over there at Troy Athens um, in your eyes. Yeah, it's uh, um, I, I I love the new Hawk. Um, I love the fact that you know in the past, like different um, different athletic programs, like in our school, um, have all used different hawks. And um, uh, Todd Hugh, uh, you know, former former soccer coach here at Athens High School, um, you know, uh, he's the he's the athletic director here now. And you know, uh, one of his uh, big pushes when he first got the job was to kind of make a uniform. Uh, hawk and get a logo that represented Athens High School and I love the fact that we have one now and everybody's using it um, the field is like you said is being redone which is um, fantastic it looks great I'm, uh, I'm I can see it from where I'm standing right now um, it has been a little tough uh, not having it for summer training because um, we still not you know it still hasn't been released to us um, but yeah, it's it's uh, like it's a, it's an exciting time here, like at Athens, not just for the football program, but for all of our athletics. Um, you know, uh, with a with a new look and a new logo, um, kind of breathes a little bit of new life into like some of our programs, and so it's been it's been an exciting change. Before I talk program strength, I do want to talk about the uniform. Um, I love the fact when you guys went back to Nike. I think that was a really good look for you guys. Um, any changes to the uniform heading into the year um, for you guys? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're uh, yeah, we have some changes. Uh, I'm hoping to um, have kind of like a helmet reveal uh, coming out pretty soon. I can send you. Um, I can send you a picture of that. Um, but yeah, we're um, just to try to match like our new, so like, like you mentioned earlier, we have, um, you know, new logo, which also came with new colors. Um, we changed the, um, you know, changed the look of the gold, um, you know, around the A that we have, we changed, you know, the, the actual like shade of red. So, um, you know, uh, just trying to match some of the new colors. We, we changed, uh, our helmet a little bit. We changed, uh, the uniform, um, a little bit. And, uh, I know the kids are excited especially to to don the new apparel uh um this fall and you know i always i always grade the uniforms you know on the blog so uh, i just give you that heads up you know what i mean yep yep yeah no uh and uh, i think i think you especially will be pleased uh especially with the new helmet that's why i brought it up i i would be (laughs) I, i looked at the i looked at the um at the um twitter feed um at football at athens um and I, I saw the um the logo there, and I, I and I was really impressed when I saw that. I mean, like just really, I'm going like, this is a great look for you guys. I mean, like I I mean like I love I loved it. You know what I mean? Especially with the helmet, the color scheme. I mean, like it it looks great. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think I think you'll be pleased. I think you'll be pleased with the with the new look helmets this year. I know that like I know that you're uh, you're kind of a uh, uh, helmet fashionista so yeah um, like yeah uh like i think you'll i think you'll be pleased with our new look i will be um let's talk program strength here obviously um we talked the varsity program of course you have the jv program and the freshman program and the middle school program um talk about those talk about your feeder programs i mean like obviously and going down to the youth levels as well yeah um uh we are working to try to get our uh, you know, system into like our middle schools. Um, Larson middle school is our, is, uh, like our, our biggest feeder, um, you know, coming into Athens high school. Um, and like, what's nice is they, you know, uh, to a limited degree, like, you know, got kids exposed last year, um, you know, to what we're running, like at the high school level, uh, they had some, you know, good success with it last year. Um, had a pretty good team. Uh, our, um, incoming freshmen, you know, are, it's fantastic. We're expecting like big numbers again from, from that group. Um, and this year they'll have a little bit of experience, you know, uh, 
running some of the stuff that we run, you know, as they come in. So, um, you know, that's, that's really like one of the focuses that we've had over the past couple of years is trying to, you know, um, you know, kind of, uh, kind of streamline, um, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the learning, you know, for kids, like from a young age, like coming up through high school, um, so that, you know, um, as they come in, it's not a culture shock. Um, so this will be probably the first year that I can say that like, you know, the, um, to, like you said, to a limited degree, like that they have been running like, um, similar stuff to us, uh, you know, at the, at the middle school level. And so I'm excited to see how that, um, you know, generates, uh, um, success at our, at our freshman level. Um, talk about the youth level over there. I mean, like, obviously any youth programs over there at Troy, um, you know what I mean? Like, um, that, you know, that feed into Larson middle school and then come into Athens. Yeah. Um, like we have a strong, uh, Troy Cowboys program. Um, that's, you know, for anybody in Troy. So that's, uh, really kids, you know, going to, um, either high school, um, having like a, so growing up, um, you know, in, in my hometown, like we had one high school, it was, uh, there was a smaller area. Um, and it was just one high school. So every kid like in the area, you, know, you knew where they were going to end up. Um, and so Troy Cowboys, they do a great job. Um, I actually, uh, um, met with, uh, one of the coaches, um, this year at, at our, um, at our youth camp. Um, he was there, you know, with his grandson. So like, we had a nice talk, but, um, uh, but yeah, like, um, you know, the, the Troy Cowboys, um, you know, they, uh, uh, they have kids like going to, to both schools. So, um, I know that like certain teams like have more kids on one side than, than the other. Um, but, uh, they do a great job down there, um, at the Troy Cowboys getting kids ready for, for middle school football. Before I let you go here, obviously, you know, the, um, you know, the history, Troy has not been a playoff. I mean, ha- Troy Athens has not made a playoff since 2011. Um, obviously I know the 2020, um, COVID-19 year, um, I know a lot of the kids have, you know, talked about postseason aspirations. Um, what do you think it's going to take for Troy Athens to be to get into the postseason conversation? We, uh, um, uh, sorry, going to move here. It's right. about to get loud. About to get loud in there. Um, uh, you know, I think just continuous growth. Um, like I said, our schedules, you know, uh, gets tougher, but we're going to play better football this year. And so, um, you know, uh, I know like you just mentioned, that's one of the goals for our kids and it's going to come down to, you know, um, what they want to do to make sure that that happens. Um, I know that this group, um, you know, this group of, uh, juniors and sophomores, um, you know, uh, this will be, you know, the, uh, but this group of juniors and sophomores, I actually uh, coached at Larson Middle School not too long ago, um, and it's a good group of kids. There's, it's a group of kids that you know are uh, dedicated and driven, and so um, you know, like you said, that's a goal of theirs. And so um, you know, I I just uh, have a have a feeling that like these kids are gonna you know work you know toward that goal, and uh, you know hopefully um, see some success, uh, in getting there, like by the end of the year. And then if I, last but not least, what is your expectations heading into the year coach? Like I said, uh, before my expectation is that we're going to play better football. Like we're going to continually play better football than the year before. Um, and you know, if we can focus on, you know, us and us just making sure that we're doing things the right way and play better football, um, then, you know, wins are going to follow. Um, and so that's our, that's our focus as a staff. That's our focus as a program is, you know, improve every day. And so like, if we improve every day, we'll improve every year. And so it's those little steps that you take like day in and day out that, um, that get you the success that you want. So that's our focus right now. Um, and, uh, I'm excited to see, you know, how these kids, um, you know, use that on the football field this year. One follow up question. Do you have a theme this year for you guys? You know what I mean? Like a theme? Uh, we do like uh, a slogan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sort of like yeah, we'll we'll be we'll be revealing that uh, uh, we'll be revealing that um, you know to the to the program uh, come two a days right. So we'll have it on our 
our team shirts for Team 51. And it says, uh, so yeah, like I said, this is this is Team 51. We'll we'll reveal that to the guys, um, you know, in August. Um, Troy Athens coach Tom Cook here. Thank you for joining us this week. I will see you at Media Day. You know what I mean? Come All up. right. Yep, I will see you at Media Day. Um, take care and enjoy your day, coach. Okay, thanks so much for the call. Yep. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, when we um, come back, we're going to talk to Avenue coach Bob Meyer here on the um, podcast. All right. Welcome back to OI Now here. I'm Sammy Tina here. We got the coach of the Yellow Jackets, Coach Bob Meyer. Um, coach, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Hey, thanks for having us. Avondale football appreciates you. And when you look at la- we we kept last season. Um, you had a nice year last year. I mean, won a div- won a playoff game, um, first time in a long while. And then, um, you know, um, talk about recap last season year us. Well, it was a whirlwind tour. You know, I was hired in last season uh, in uh, March. And we got right after it with the kids and, and what, as a staff, we uh, looked at the talent level of what they had and we felt what we uh, could do with them was a, was a big change from what they had done in the past. And it definitely took buy-in from the kids and the kids without question it was yes, coach, whatever you think it's going to take for us to have a season of our dreams. And, and that's what got us going and and it was a really good season you know to come in and install new offense new defense and change in special teams perspective um with kids that had had some success but was a senior dominant team it was it was a lot and uh it, it went very very well like you said you know we won nine games and we won the gold, the league, uh, the division that we're in and, and kids were excited about that and of course beat some of the teams that they consider their rivalries with and and but our focus was qualify for the playoffs with the goal of getting a home playoff game and hopefully having a deep run in the playoffs so we achieved almost everything on there the the deep run didn't materialize we ran into an excellent wall lake western program and that's what we kind of want to strive to become you know a team that is consistent year in and year out, achieving the goals that we were talking about. And then when you look at this team now, you're going to have, you're going to have a very young team, but a proven experience team as well. I mean, like considering your juniors last year are now seniors. Um, but one big question for me is the quarterback spot. Last year, you had a quarterback in Jake Herzog, who was really good. I mean, for you guys, I mean, like mastered that, um, the wing T offense you guys ran. Um, how's your quarterback situation looking? We've had a really good uh, off season, seven on seven. There's been development and progress. You know, we've got a senior, a junior, and a sophomore all kind of fighting for it, and they've all gotten better. Uh, we still have uh, this week to finish out with our seven on seven. We still need to continue to improve. Um, the weight isn't going to be put on that position. Uh, Tyler Herzog, like you said, was, was special. He threw over 20 touchdowns with zero interceptions. Um, so you might say, well, you know, coach Meyer wants to get 20 touchdowns out of whoever the next quarterback is, which is not the case. The case I want is don't turn the ball over. That's what impressed me about Tyler was zero interceptions. He protected the football and the strength of our team this year is going to be our defense. So if we as an offensive unit can just protect the football and be efficient between the special teams and the defense, we'll be in every game, which is all we can hope for. Talk about these athletes. I mean, obviously, you got Cooper there. You got Justin there. Um, talk about, you know what I mean, like your – talk about your um, proven players OA Nation needs to know about. So, you, last year, you know, we were a senior-dominant team. But as, as a head coach, you, you win with seniors. But your goal is to get the juniors as much playing time to the point of by the end of the season due to the natural percentage of injuries and things like that you're playing as much the junior class as you are in the senior class. So I really don't feel like we're reloading. We're bringing kids back with a lot of experience. And and the thing that excites me the most is that we've got kids that are, have bought into the point like coach, whatever it takes, I want to be on the field. I never want to leave the field. 
So if that means I'm playing a position that might not be all that sexy and, and, and appealing to a lot of kids, I don't care. I just want to win and I just want to play. In that regard, I think we're going to be a better football team this year than we were last. And then when you look at, of course, we mentioned the division. Um, let's talk about your non-league first. I mean, you open up the year with Cedar Springs. I mean, like, you open up, I mean, like, how did you get Cedar Springs into, your, into that for your week one matchup? So when you're at the dance and the lights start to come up and there's not a whole lot of attractive women sitting there, beggars can't be choosers. And I know Cedar Springs felt the same way. I've been around a long time, and when you're struggling, everybody wants a spot on your dance card. When you're good, nobody wants to be with you, and that's what la- that's one of the byproducts of last season. That tells you that, to a degree, Avondale football has arrived, that nobody wants to play. Everybody wants the easy win, and, and especially as a Division three football team. In my past, you know, I've been one, two, three, four, and five, when you're three and four and even into the five category, it's tough to get a game because if you're, 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 you're not bringing the points that you get based on your size for the ones and the twos. So they don't want to play you. You know, the threes are looking for an easy win. They want somebody above them because it's bigger playoff points. Like we're not a playoff pinata for anybody unless they're D you know, five, six or seven. So that in said, Hey, they were willing to come and play and we're willing to play them. So we got a game and it's game on, you know, they're running the full house T they play it really good football in Grand Rapids. Obviously, since that size state's produced the division three state champions for the last few years, um, it's going to, it's going to be a test. I'm glad they're coming here, but we do have to go there next year. So we're excited about it. And that's going to make it interesting. You guys going out there next year. I mean, like going to Cedar Springs that, that I mean, that's going to be, I mean, I've been, I've been in the Grand Rapids area. I mean, like really nice area down there. Really <laughs> nice area. You go down 96 and like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I've been, to oh, Ho- yeah. I mean, like I love going to the West side of the state. It's really good area. I mean, I did, uh, I did Kalamazoo Lloyd Norris multiple times. Uh, yeah. The, what we're, we are going to do though, is they're bringing their JV and we're going to play the JV game prior to the varsity game. That way we're saving on both teams and we'll do the same thing next year when we reciprocate. Ooh, I'd like to give a shout out there to everyone in the west side of the state, Kalamazoo area as well, Wing Stadium there. I love that stadium there. Um, hey, you, you have a team, we're willing to travel. Ooh, and then let's look at your other other non-conference games. Um, break down your other non-conference games for me if you want to, Coach. So week two, uh, we have, uh, we're going to Birmingham Seaholm again, uh, going against uh, Coach DeWalt. I enjoyed his podcast with you, by the way. Did a great job. Thank you. Um, you know, they're running triple option, which is in my past as well. We had a really good game against them last year. That was our only loss of the season. Uh, our starting tailback went down in the first half, and, and you know, we had some kids needed to step up, and it was they just weren't prepared, which was a, something that we need to fix for this year. We need to have all of our levels prepared to produce at, at a moment's notice. You know, we, we preach don't be the weakest link. So that was a learning lesson for us last season as a team. Um, the football program. And it's hard going against so, severe, so you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, we, we, we held our own. It was a good game. It was a good game. Um, and I'm looking forward to, you know, week two. Our kids feel pretty confident that, hey, this is we're going to make it another really good game. They're a great program, and they're very well coached. So that's week two. Um, week three, we have Macomb Lutheran North. You know, Coach Wenzelberger was, is one of the most fundamentally sound coaches, and I've gone against him when I was at Livonia Clarenceville. I have nothing but the utmost respect for him and his program. And here's the situation where they are, I believe, a division smaller than us. And they're willing to come up to the plate and play a, a team that finished, you know, nine wins last season. So that's that's kudos for his program. So many teams run away from that kind of a situation, and they're not. So he's got a chance to to beat us with hopefully a positive record and do well for his program or find out exactly where they're at and what needs to be fixed to prepare for the remainder of his season. So, again, Kudos to him and, and his program, which is a really, really talented group. Talk about the gold in your eyes. I mean, obviously, um, I know last season, I know how bad he wanted to come up to the um, blue. I mean, like, talk about the gold in your eyes this year. So, in, in terms of what division we play, I don't care. Mm-hmm. We're, you know what? If you want to be anybody, you got to beat somebody. Um, I do believe 
if you take a step back, that the gold is probably the place for us based on enrollment size, since we're the second smallest one, only the Pontiac smaller than us, and geographic. I like that. I like that about the gold. And the nice thing is like we do get to play some other teams in the league that are bigger than us. So it kind of gives us that opportunity as well. Um, you know, Pony, we started off uh, gold play with Pontiac. Uh, you know, Coach Jefferson last year was the coach of the year for the gold division, did a phenomenal job. He took over a program that was, I think, like a, almost a 30-game losing streak yep. and not only won a game, won multiple games Great. his kids and his kids played hard. They played with class and, and represented their community so well. I, I thought that he was just the best of the best. We start off with them, which obviously our proximity to Pontiac is one of our, our big rivals. So that's going to be a good game for us to start off with the gold. Um, second game is Ferndale and coach Royal has had a lot of success. They've owned the gold uh, prior to us arriving for a number of years. And, you know, last year we were able to get the better of them at our place. We've already met up with them at a seven on seven and their kids were excited to go against us. So we know that that's going to be a game. Coach Royal does an amazing job. Um, Royal Oak is after that. Coach Campbell is building it up. His numbers were really good uh, last season. So we're expecting improved play out of them. And, and we're going to be everybody's bullseye. You know, everybody's going to want to come and take us off of that, that gold division championship. So we got to get ready for Royal Oak. Uh, Berkeley is the one that we don't know about. You know, we caught them last year um, when there was some turmoil within the program and the, and the coaching staff. So I can't say that we saw their best. Um, and I really, of course, don't know what the new coach is going to be doing yet, but uh we're going to have to be prepared for that. I know Berkeley football has been there in the past, and I would imagine uh, coach now in charge is going to try to work really hard to bring them back up. So, you know, there aren't going to be any easies. Um, yeah. We finished the season with uh, in league play with Rochester Hill, Stony Creek. So here's our chance to go against a, a much larger school with new coach from Lake Orion and, and, you know, I know the Lake Orion coaching tree is a strong and well-prepared. So we got our work cut out for us there with playoff points on the line. You know, they're going to be playing the big teams week in and week out. So for them, it might not be a big deal, but for us, we're, that's going to be a really good challenge for us. And we're excited about that. And, th and that's what makes it exciting playing those D one teams. I mean, like you guys getting Stony Creek, that's going to be an interesting matchup, interesting coaching match between you and coach Powell. Um, going against each other in that one. I mean, that should be a really fun matchup. It, it's going to be. You know, last year we made the playoffs and we played uh, Holly and their defensive coordinator was a former Lake Orion defensive Dave coordinator. Dave yep. yep. So, you know, and Coach Bell and I have gone against each other multiple times in our younger days. So, uh, yeah, we're excited about that opportunity. You know it's going to be really good football. Oh, yes, um, I, I do. And then week nine we have uh, Carlton Airport. Ooh. And last year they finished with 10 wins. Uh, I know that they graduated a significant number and one of the, the, the head coach has stepped down, but one of his assistants within the program has taken over. So we're going to finish our last game of the regular season. And we're going to find out how good we are in preparation for the playoff run that we are preparing for. Do they come up to you guys or do they, or do you got to go down there to Carl? They're, they're coming up to us. They're coming up to us. So Ooh. it's, it's going to be good. I mean, That'd like, if you had to go down there, that would have been really interesting. You know what I mean? Because I know that Carlton area down near Monroe. I mean, like, that's a really interesting area. <laughs> I've played played a lot of games down that way. And, and based on traffic, I don't really want to go back down there. But we will next season. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. <laughs> and then um, and then let's look at program strength. Obviously, um, your JV program, your freshman, your middle school program, your youth levels. Talk about them for a minute. For a bit. So our middle school program uh, has come online with us. Uh, began last season, and this season we've made really good strides. So we're excited about that. Um, we are running 50 kids on the varsity uh, on paper right now, and then JV slash freshmen are in the 30s. So our plan is to run a freshman team for some of the season, not not a nine week freshman season probably more like a 
like a four game season and then the rest of the games being played they'll they'll be rolled back in with the jv especially with the fifth quarter rule that would allow us to do that so ultimately our goal would be to run three full levels and we're working in that direction but not there yet for for you know all the full season of slate of games but um no so things are going in the right direction we're growing we're growing and how's the youth levels over there at Avondale? I'm sorry, say that again? The youth levels. You know what I mean? The youth football so levels? So the youth levels, uh, we have our middle school football. Our middle school has its own football team. Mm-hmm. And that is its, and that is our feeder. And they're typically running about 15 to 20 seventh graders and 15 to 20 eighth graders. So that we can kind of have to look forward to, plus the kids that kind of come in school of choice or just decide to come out for football for the first time. So they're they're doing their job. They're getting them out. And let's look at, of course, the um, you know, I, I, when you look at it, you guys, and I think this is going to be um, you know, obviously when you get the postseason, um, I know you have that mentality of like, you know, I I don't care about playing anywhere. Um, have you like, you know, if you get in the playoffs this year, um, what if you had to ask the MHA playoff committee, where would you want to go? Would you want to go north, south, east, or west in your eyes? I like being able to play someone who's never played us before. Kind of like what I call the Tom Izzo factor. I want to see you prepare for us in a week and I'll prepare for you in a week and see where the chips fall. We've had a lot of success. What I don't like is playing the same teams that we've played before, either in season or in previous seasons. So we played Holly in, in Western this past year. I don't want to play Holly in Western again. I want to play somebody else. The The beauty of where we're located is what I call like the linchpin. We can get pulled south. We can get pulled east. We can get pulled north. Matter of fact, we were slated, in my opinion, in my belief, last year to go and play three downriver teams until King slipped in as the last team in the playoffs and they took that spot and that pushed us north so you know i would love to play somebody that has just never played us before that's kind of my goal who that is and where they are i don't care and then let's look at your uniforms i mean obviously i love the purple helmet that you guys have um any change to uniforms this upcoming season nope nope just still the black and white and we're staying on that you know when i came in we had there's so many versions of colors and cloth i've never seen so many jersey options and the kids were were very much interested in those things and i had to be the old man you know the get off my lawn old guy and say none of this matters winning matters winning playoff game matters that's it if this is what's important to you you're never going to be a major player in the state so i i apologize i've tempered that excitement I, mean, I get it. You know what I mean? I get it. You know what I mean? But I, I do love the uniform combination guys have the all black at home and then the white on the road with the purple helmet. I really like that helmet, that combination. Purple is a really good look for you guys. I really like it. Oh, it's slimming. It's slimming. I, I like it. Mm-hmm. Before I let you go, coach, um, what is your expectations heading into the season for you guys? Uh, we're going to play. We're going to qualify for the playoffs. That's, that's our focus. That's our goal. And as long as, like, we can stay upright and healthy, we're going to achieve that goal, you know. Um, like you talked about talent-wise, we Cooper and uh, Justin returning, they're three-year varsity starters. Uh, Cooper's got a Division II offer from Davenport University, which I believe will be the first of, of many for him. So he's a, a special player. Um, I, I think the strength of the team this year, though, is going to be the defense. Mm-hmm. And our linebacking core with Jacob Manley and Bryce Thomas and Earl Arrington, Brandon McCauley, like they, they're coming downhill. They've been very impressive in this off season. And I think that uh, we have a very athletic secondary with the two boys that we already talked about, you know, Anthony Burton and Jordan Bush. We have Mark Vaughn Robinson's worked really hard. So the secondary is, is, going to be aggressive and talented brian green they they have experience and they know what they're doing so you know again the defense is going to set the tone the d-line has, has returned we got a couple big boys in the middle there and in, in uh, cam washington um 
Raymond Clark, we're, we're not going to get pushed around. We got experience, Demarion Flanroy and, and Charlie Killian and Daniel Roberson up front. We got a freshman. You talked about the middle school coming in, Brian Collins. Uh, Brian was finished in the top three in the in the middle school, Oakland County Middle School uh, meets in both the shot put and the 100-yard dash. I'm aware of that. I've seen him. I coached shot put at Scripps Middle School in Lake Orion. <laughs> You, you know who I'm talking about. Yep. And uh, he's a varsity player. He's going to be a varsity starter. We're going to find a place, and we're going to get him out there because he's someone special, and we're not going to waste any time that we have with him. He's going to be on that field, and, and he's going to produce. Any other impact players? You know, offensively, uh, Elijah Grigsby, um, when Miles Moore went down last year, he took over. Is in the backfield and finished. He was the starter at the end of the season for the last four games or so. So we've got high hopes for him. You know, our O line, as I said, is is got a lot of guys returning, and then guys who play very athletic positions on defense are now going to transition to playing also that offensive line. We're going to be very, very athletic. Uh, you know, we got CJ who was up for being a captain. Uh, he's going to be one of the big old linemen for us up front, doing a great job. So you know, we might we're not going to be what we were last year, which has been one of our focuses. Is last season's over? Mm -hmm. It it was great, but it's behind us. And we're not looking back now. We have to build this season, and we got to do what we are. We got to be true to ourselves this year. So you know, Timmy Paul kicking off the football. He's our onside specialist, playing defense and then running the ball down your throat. That's going to be Avondale football. Um, Avondale coach Bob Meyer, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. I will see you at Media Day. I'm looking forward to seeing you at Media Day talking more about the Yellow Jackets. There you go. Appreciate you having us out here. Thank you real much, and God bless. God bless you. All right, um, when we um come back, we're going to talk to Clarkson coach Justin Pintar here on the podcast. Right. Welcome back to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Tumini here. We got the coach at the Wolves, Coach Justin Pintar here. Coach, thank you for calling in this week. No problem. Anytime, Sammy. Glad to have uh, been a part of the show here today. Um, when you look at, let's recap last year. Obviously, when you look at you guys, um, an up and down year. I mean, like you were up and down last season. Um, talk about, you know what I mean? Just recap last season in your eyes. Yeah, so it, it, it definitely was one of those, uh, you know, up and down type of seasons. Um, part of that is is probably attributed to our schedule and, and really – never having much of a break. Um, I mean, the OAA red is obviously, um, I think as good of a conference a, a league as there is in the entire state. And then our non-conference schedule <clears throat> that we had with that and our crossover games. I mean, we played, uh, two state champions, um, in Harper woods and Southfield in our crossover games. And then our, our other two games were Northville and uh, Eisenhower who are two very, very good football teams last year. So um, our record wasn't great and it definitely was up and down and, and not as consistent as I'd like it to be. But um, some of that can be attributed to the, uh, the opponents that we played um, including the, the non-conference games that we had. And it got you guys in the playoffs, obviously that schedule, um, obviously playing a tough schedule, you know, helps you in the postseason, so, and, and it certainly helped you guys out there um, getting into the playoffs. Um, when you look at, when you, let's talk schedule first before we talk about um, key returners for you guys and also some key players for you guys. Um, your schedule is is very daunting. You guys open up week one in Ann Arbor, and I'm sorry, in um, Detroit against um, against um, Belleville. So talk about how that matchup came out, came about. Well, we, um, so we were supposed to have a, a two game series with Northville, um, and, and their schedule, I guess, um, they, they were looking for another home game in their schedule. So th that didn't work out. Um, so we were kind of looking for a game somewhat late in the process. And, um, I knew Belleville was looking for a game <clears throat> and, and we've always felt like, especially early in the season. I mean, if there's a time to test your team, it's early in the year where you can go and play a team and, and find out, um, you know, a, what your team is about. And then secondly, we can go and figure out, okay, here's where we got to get better. Here's what we got to improve on um, in order to achieve the goals that we want to achieve. So 
you know, we, we've always felt like to be the best, you got to play the best. And, and we really don't want to ever have that mindset of backing down from anybody. Um, I think once you start thinking that way, once you start um, thinking that other teams are, are better than you and, and we shouldn't play that team, that starts to seep into the mindset of the entire team. And, and that's never where we want to be. We always want to feel like we're as good as anybody and we can play with anybody. And um, you know, back to last year, I mean, we, we were six and six, so our record doesn't really indicate it, but you know, we're a play away against West Bloomfield in the regional final. Um, West Bloomfield was a play away in the, in the semifinal against Southfield and, and Belleville was a play away against Southfield. So we, we know that, um, you know, we, we can play with the, with the best teams. We feel like we can play with the best teams. And so we wanted to find out right away, um, you know, what we were made of. And, and I think, you know, for us to going to play a team like Belleville and the talent they have, but, but also obviously Bryce Underwood um, being as highly touted as he is. I mean, there's not going to be very many opportunities to go play the number one player in the country. Um, and, and I feel like, man, what an opportunity, especially if you're a defensive kid, um, you should be looking forward to that opportunity, that challenge, if you're any kind of competitor. And then when you look at your not, rest of your non-conference, you, you have Southfield week two, um, I know last year you guys played them, and that was a tight game. I mean, but now you got Southfield's a completely different team now. What's your thought process about playing Southfield Week Two? Yeah, that one. Um, I mean, it's it's hard to know what it's going to look like against Southfield this year. Obviously, they got the new coaching staff, um, and and that team last year was very senior heavy. I mean, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I know coming into last year, I think they returned you know, something like 16 starters. So th they had a ton of experience coming back last year. Um, and a lot of that experience is gone. So um, I, I really, I don't know a, a ton about Southfield, you know, hopefully week one gives us a, a good look at, at what they're going to be. Um, but, but that's definitely one of those games on our schedule that, that it's always been a tough game. I expect it to still be a tough game, um, you know, going into their place, but I don't know what to expect out of them with the new staff and, and obviously um, quite a bit of turnover in terms of their starters. And I know when I look at Southfield's schedule, um, they don't have a week one right now. And I think that, I mean, that does concern me a little bit. So, you know, I just want to give you a heads up on that early on, you know, so. Yeah. And then, um, and then, Sorry, um, and then week eight, you got, and then, um, and then you guys got Troy Athens on the, on the schedule. Um, going over there to the new field of Troy Athens. So what's your thought process about playing Troy Athens? So uh, we talk about this all the time, especially when you're playing teams that you don't normally see. Um, I, I feel like when we go to play teams like a Troy Athens, we got a target on our back. And um, I think it's a game that, that they probably have circled on their schedule. Kind of like we talked about Belleville a minute ago. I mean, um, I think that's a game where you got to be really careful going into play teams like that um, and, and not get caught up in, you know, they're in, they're not in the red or something like that. I, I think that's a trap. So um, I, that's one of those games on the schedule where, um, you know, it, it's a little bit early to start focusing on that, but as it starts to get to that time, um, it's important that guys stay focused, they stay locked in and they do their job. Um, Cause a lot of times I, I feel like, again, those teams play up for those games and, and you really got to avoid um, playing down in any of those games against teams that you don't traditionally play. And, and, and that's um, the kind of the mindset that we want to make sure we have when we get to that point. And then of course, talk about that rematch. You got with Dedica Eisenhower, of course you got Eisenhower coming to your place. Um, you know, last year it was, um, it was rough for you guys um, going down to Swinehart playing Eisenhower. Um, talk about that matchup week nine with Dedica Eisenhower a team in the Mac red that, um, you know, that you have a lot of familiarity with. Yeah. So the, the Mac red is obviously a very, very good league as well. Um, you know, I consider that to be one of the other, um, really great leagues in the state. And when you're playing a team like Utica Eisenhower, they have a lot of tradition, a lot of history, very well coached, uh, football team, um, and talented football team. So I, I think that's a game where, um, you know, again, it's, it's early to start looking ahead to week nine, but I think the kids are going to be fired up to have that opportunity to go play them. Um, you know, a lot of times you, you don't get that second opportunity to play teams. And in this case, uh, you get another opportunity, at least for the underclassmen to go and, and 
uh, kind of prove something. So I know that's a game that, that we'll be excited for. We'll be fired up for uh, when the time comes. And then we got the red. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm going to call this right now. I think I, I wouldn't, it would not surprise me if all five teams in this division gets in the playoffs this year because that's how tough this division is. So talk about, you know what I mean? I mean, like your feelings about each team in this division. We'll start off with West Bloomfield. Yeah, so the the red is is like we had talked about earlier. It's as good as it gets. Um, West Bloomfield is as talented a team as we'll play. Uh, we we know that going in that they're going to be um, uh, that they're going to be fired up to play us. It's been a great rivalry for the last 10, 15 plus years, and it, it's again it's that game that you, you you circle it on the schedule. You know when you play West Bloomfield. Um, the guys are ready for that game. It doesn't take much to get the guys focused. They're locked in. They're ready to play that game because again, they know what's at stake, right? I mean, there's a good chance that, um, if you win that game, you got a great shot at the league. And if you lose that game, you, you probably don't have much of a shot at the league. So, um, it, it's, it's a game that we definitely have circled every single year. Um, and the talent that those guys have over there is, um, is second to none. You know, they, they have as, as good as skill guys. Um, and, and some big guys now too, that, uh, th- that there are in the state. So great opponent. We look forward to that game. Every time it, it comes up on the schedule and it's been a great back and forth battle, uh, for, like I said, about the last 10 to 15 years, Adams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rochester Adams is, um, again, same thing. Like they're, they're as good as anybody every year. Um, they, they've been knocking at the door, winning some state championships, uh, the offense that they run presents problems because it's, it's something that really only they run at least in our league. And, and it just is something that you only get a few days to prepare for. So that creates some issues and, um, and defensively, they're just, they're aggressive. They get after you. Uh, they remind me a lot of, of ourselves cause they just got 11 guys on the field that compete and play hard and, um, very well coached. Uh, we respect the heck out of Rochester Adams. And, um, again, they, they should be a very good football team. Once again, Oxford. Yeah. Oxford, you know, I was thinking about this earlier and I, I feel like, um, you know, their, their record doesn't quite indicate it, but if you took Oxford and you put them up against uh, other division one teams in the state. I, I think they're as good as, uh, as just about any They're um, again, their record kind of like ours last year wasn't great right on paper. It doesn't look great, but when you look at the schedule and the teams that they play um, same kind of thing with them, they, they have that mindset of we're not going to back down. Uh, I'm sure there's been people that have said, why don't they go play in the white? And, and that's just not who they are. Um, that's not the mindset that they have. And that's the kind of opponent you get when we go play them. We know, um, regardless of, of their talent level, they're going to give everything they got and they're going to put it all on the line. So, um, year in and year out, that game has always been a tough game for us. And it it doesn't matter again, how talented they are. If they got the talent, then they're really tough. Um, if they have, uh, not as much talent as they usually do, then they're still really tough because they, they just play their butts off over there. Orion. Yeah. So obviously Orion's been, been our, you know, our rival, as long as I've been here, it's, it's been Lake Orion. That's all the talk has ever been. And, um, you know, obviously the, the success in, in winning uh state championship, uh, you know, not too long ago. And then um, I, I know things were maybe not up to Lake Orion standards there for a bit, but obviously last year um, that was, that was Lake Orion of old. And um, you know, when, when you guys came in here and played us, um, and we, we took our, we took our lumps and, and we knew at that time that that was as good a Lake Orient team as there had been. And, um, you know, probably since the state championship team, and I'm sure there was probably some thoughts that, that, that team, um, could go win a state championship. I think they were as good as anybody in the state last year. Um, and, and so I know they lost a few pieces, but they also got some guys back that were, were key contributors. Uh, from last year's team. So I would expect them to, uh, to be just as good this year. And and again, it's going to be one of those classic Clarkson Lake Orion battles here this year. Um, let's talk about your team. Now, obviously you got a lot of proven skill players coming back. Um, let's talk about your quarterback, um, Brady Collins. Um, talk about how, um, he's developed, um, this off season. Yeah. So, uh, so Brady, 
at the end of the school year decided he was going to go a different direction. So mm. um, he's not currently uh, expected to play here this fall. Okay. Um, so we, we've got, we've got a couple of younger guys, um, Alex Wyshenko and Mick Mahaffey, who have been kind of battling it out in the summer for that quarterback spot. Um, there, there'll be a little bit of inexperience cause they're sophomores, but they're both, uh, very good athletes. Um, the, the, their teammates like them. They're well-respected. Um, you know, Alex uh, kind of has a little bit of a different skill set than Mick does. Um, Mick is probably as fast a guy as we got on our team. So he gives us an element there, uh, of speed. And so they're still kind of battling it out. We'll find out when the pads come on. Um, you know, we, we got a couple weeks to figure that out, but we feel pretty good about the two, um, kids that we got in house to, to replace him. Talk about the twins. I mean, like the Bowman twins, Lucas and Griffin, um, both, both of them proven, proven, um, proven backs. Proven linebackers, obviously. Um, talk about the twins. Yeah, they. Um, so they'll be th- three year. This is their third year now of varsity football, um, and obviously they played a key role for us last year. But um, now with three years under their belt, uh, they, they know what's expected of them, and they know what they need to do. And um, they are definitely the the kind of kids that you just enjoy coaching because they're all about football. They're all about going out there. They play hard. Um, there's never been a, a time and there never will be a time where I have to question their effort on the field. Um, they just don't play that way. Those guys play, um, all out all the time. Um, and, and they're physical, they're fast. Um, and, and they're out there to, to, to go, you know, when they're running the ball, they're running it, uh, hard and they're not looking or scared of contact. And when they're on defense, they're, they're looking to go, um, find the ball. So, uh, we're excited to have those guys back with another year under their belt. And, um, you know, it's exciting to think that we still got them, not just for this year, but one more season after this. Talk about your receivers. Obviously, um, you got some proven wide receivers on that team. Um, talk about your proven receivers. Yeah. So the, probably the most experienced of the group is going to be Brady back. Um, and, and he's, a guy that'll be a three-year varsity guy for us starts on defense at safety um, played quite a bit uh, or a decent amount I should say uh, on offense last year but uh, we had you know with Des Stevens and Brody Cozen we had a couple guys that that were power five receivers so there wasn't quite as many opportunities on the offensive side for him but this year I expect him to play a key role at the wide receiver spot um, then we got uh, Benny Adams is going to be a big target for us. He's a, he's a six, five, six, six kid that, um, that does a nice job. And again, just didn't get a ton of opportunities last year because of the situation that we had at wide receiver, the depth that we had at wide receiver. And, um, so th- those will be kind of a, a couple of our main guys, but then we got some younger guys that'll be, um, second year varsity guys, but didn't get a ton of time last year that are really athletic, uh, Colton Williams and, and Hank Hornug. Um, those guys should, should present some, some problems. They got very good speed, uh, and athleticism. So we're looking forward to see what they can do. And, um, and we got some other guys too. I mean, we, we got a lot of pieces in terms of skill position guys that we can put out on the field. So, um, we might not have the, the power five guy at wide receiver, like we did last year, but we feel really good about our depth and, um, the ability to to spread the football around, which sometimes can be um, an asset as well. You know, when teams know where you want to go with the football, it makes it easier for them to defend that. Uh, when you got four, five, six different guys that you really are trying to get the football to, I think it makes it tougher on defenses. So um, I, I feel like we have that ability to spread the ball around a lot this year to different guys. Talk your offensive line and also with talking your defense, obviously. Um any proven players on the offensive line? You know what I mean? And then we'll go defense. Yeah. So our, our most experienced lineman is going to be drew ball. Um, and he was a starter on defense for us and came in and started on offense, got hurt at the end of the season there. Um, uh, which was a big loss for us up front, but he's, uh, he's not a, he's not our typical Clarkson lineman that we've had in the past. He's not that, you know, 285 pounds, six foot three, six foot four lineman. Um, he's a little undersized, but man, he plays with great technique 
and he's physical and strong. So the the lack of size he makes up for with everything else and the the energy and the effort that he plays with and and he plays that way on the defensive side of the ball too. Um, he's just one of those guys that that can be a, a kind of a game wrecker, game changer on the defensive side of the ball. So um, we're excited for him to be on our offensive line once again. And um, and then after that, we're going to be a little bit more. Um, uh, Inexper- I'd say inexperienced. We're going to be a little bit younger. We're going to start probably um, there's a good chance. We start two or three juniors on that offensive line. Um, w- one of which was with us last year. So he got some good experience um, just being on varsity. He got a little bit of time, not a lot of time in games, but he was going up against um, these guys in practice all the time. And that makes a big difference. So um, w- we're going to be a little bit younger. We lost, um, you know, five seniors that had started at some point last year, but our offensive line last year was, was as small as we've ever had. I I think we were at one point, three of them were under 200 pounds. Um, and, and the other, the other ones were, you know, 225, if that, so, um, we should be a little bigger, which I'm looking forward to not going to be quite, uh, you know, vintage Clarkson offensive line, but a little more size never hurts up front. Talk about your back and your defense, the linebackers and the secondary. Um, when you look at Clarkson, I know this is going to be a strength for you guys this year, especially in the secondary. Yeah, our, our secondary, um, both uh, Lucas Bowman played back there last year, started for us back there. Uh, Brady Beck started for us at safety last year. So we got guys that are very experienced in that that back end. Um and again, we, we have some younger guys that are coming up that we really like, and we just got to kind of see where those pieces fit. I mean, um, Cam loves a kid that hasn't even played a down of varsity football yet. And he got a couple offers just off of his athletic ability this summer. So, um, we have some kids like that, that, that we're looking forward to. So our, our, our back, you know, seven or, or eight look pretty good. Our linebackers, Griff. Bowman plays, um, he'll play one of our overhang backer spots. And then uh, Brady Cody's a, a guy that missed last season that uh, works his butt off in the weight room. And, and we're really excited to see what he can do pre, uh, in the uh, middle linebacker. Um, Cooper Collins is another kid who's a, who's a very good athlete and has very good size. Um, that we're going to look at playing me, maybe either as an overhang or, or back at defensive end, depending on where we need them. So we, we got a lot of guys. We we really are, um, you know, pretty fortunate with what we got. And, and just in the seven on seven and stuff in the summer, I think those guys um, have, have looked good and, and we're expecting a lot out of our defense this year and, and hoping that's probably the most improved part of our team. Um, talk about impact players. I mean, like any, Newcomers, OA Nation needs to know about um, when it comes to Clarkson. You know, it's it's hard to say. I mean, I like I said, I mentioned Cam Love. I think he's a kid um, that has that kind of potential. Um, you know, on the offensive side, I think a uh, Colton Williams or a Hank Hornug has that kind of potential. Uh, but but they got to go out and prove it. They got to go out and do it. So um, we got guys that we're really excited about, just in terms of of what we see in their uh, athletic ability. Um, but once the pads come on, that's when we'll really find out. So, um, you know, there, there's guys that certainly have that potential to be kind of these, um, these guys that, that step up for us this year that, that maybe didn't get a chance last year um, that we're looking forward to seeing. Okay. Um, talk about your, um, talk about program strength. Obviously you you got three programs there. You got your middle school program, the youth program, there's the Clarkson chiefs. Some um, talk about, talk about the, um, sub varsity program and also talk about the middle school and the youth programs at Clarkston. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's a, a huge part of what has made us successful here is, is the programs that we have at the sub varsity level, um, you know, seven through 12. One of the things that we're really fortunate about is that our, um, a lot of our coaches stick around. A lot of our coaches are, are in the district, they're teachers, um, they, they, they want to help out in any way they can. And so, you know, we're really lucky that you know, from year to year, we, we probably retain 90% of our coaches. And, and that makes a big difference because they know the system. They know what our expectations are. You're not trying to, um, you know, coach up your coaches at the, at the lower level. So that's a big part of it is just having that 
continuity and that consistency at our, our lower levels. And, and we're really fortunate in that way. And I, I don't think that's the case at, at every um, school. Um, and then in terms of just uh, how we feel about them is uh, our seventh and eighth grade programs. I, I believe, I believe all of those levels went undefeated last year, if I'm not mistaken, if they lost the game uh, outside of playing each other, um, I don't recall. So um, our seventh and eighth grade programs are strong. Our numbers have been really good at both levels. I think we're at about 70 kids last year at, at seventh and eighth grade at each level. Um, and then this year's incoming freshman class, I, I think we're right now, we're thinking it's going to be in the fifties that might drop off before the season starts. But if, if we're in the fifties with our freshman program, um, that's a really good sign. And then, um, you know, both our freshman and JV programs, uh, continue to to do what's in the best interest of the program, and and sometimes that doesn't always lead to winning every single game. They they may lose some games because they're trying to run our stuff, and and maybe it doesn't fit quite as well with the freshmen. But um, it makes a big difference later on. And and then there's also the case of you know us taking some guys maybe away from our JV team, and 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 that affects their depth and stuff. But um, both those levels have, have had success. Um, and, and traditionally have had success and continue to have success. So um, we're really fortunate here. You know, I mean, that's the one thing about Clarkson football is um, we don't get transfers. We don't have transfers. We don't have anybody coming in from all outside the school. We're not out there recruiting other, um, other um, kids from other teams. We play with the kids we got and, um, and the kids we got are really good. And, and they, and they, they put in the work, they put in the time, uh, they believe in in what we're trying to teach them and coach them, uh, and that makes a big difference. And um, you know, and a lot of that does start at the the Chiefs level, at the Clarkson Chiefs level. Um, and I know their numbers have been very good again too recently. So um, it, it starts down there. It starts with that program, and that's our feeder system. And um, we're really lucky that we have the the continuity. The 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 program is not just a nine through 12 program like it is in some places it is a uh seven through 12 program for us but our but our feeder program ties right into it as well um and we're really lucky to have that i do like to talk a little bit here about um coach fife i mean obviously um you um a couple weeks ago coach dan fife passed away um talk about the legacy that he's had on on you um and I know he's had a lot on everybody here in the basketball community and the um, OA nation. So talk about the impact that coach Dan Fife has had on you. Yeah. So when I, when I first got hired here um, at Clarkston, I was, uh, I was introduced to coach Fife. He was one of the first people um, that I got introduced to and, and we sat down and we talked and um, he knew I, I had coached basketball before and I wanted to coach basketball and so he got me a, a position at our seventh grade um, at Sashba Middle School. And so right from the start, he was one of the first people I met. And, you know, the opportunity to coach uh, kind of next to him or, or alongside of him is something that I will cherish forever. He was a guy that was very welcoming. I mean, even as a seventh grade coach, those guys invited um, invited me in to come watch practices or sit on the bench or go in the locker room and listen to the talks in the locker room. Um, and, and so I always appreciated how he was, um, welcoming in that way. You know, he always accepted everybody and, and wanted every, anybody that wanted to be involved, had an opportunity to come and learn from him. And the, the thing that I probably take away the most from him was the standard that he set, the, the standard that he set the, of excellence, he never wavered on. He was a guy who was an ultra competitive um, human being. I mean, it, he just, he didn't want to lose. And he set that standard for his team and he made sure that he held his team to that standard. Um, and not a lot of coaches can, can do that. Not a lot of coaches can set that standard and hold their teams to that standard that he set. Um, that's just takes a special person. And, and what I think is even better is when, when the games weren't going or when, when practice was done, he just had a way of connecting and relating to people and, and telling a story, um, just, just having a conversation, knowing everybody's name. I mean, he, he was a guy that, 
um, was as good as it gets off the court. And, and that's, that's the biggest difference. I mean, some guys can be tough. Um, they, they can be mean or whatever, but, but they don't have that personality off the court. And, and so he could be tough, but he also had that way of connecting with his players. And, um, you know, just a, a couple of weeks ago, they had the memorial here for him. And, um, you could tell just how many people he impacted by the, you know, um, you know, thousand or, or so people that were at that memorial for him. So, um, really fortunate to have an opportunity to kind of watch him at his craft and learn from him. And, and there's stuff that, that I know I say today that, that I took from him and um, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. Toss, let's talk about the impact that KR has had on you. Obviously I know um, coach Richardson still around the Clarkson football program. Um, talk about the impact that KR has had on you. Yeah. So, um, I mean, talk about being uh, lucky, right? Like you get your first teaching job and it's at Clarkston and and you got Dan Fife, uh, on one hand, and then you got Kurt Richardson on the other and to, to be able to learn from, um, and, and see how those two guys lead the, the way that they lead by example, same thing with KR. I mean, he set a standard and he held everybody to that standard. He held not just the players to that standard, but he held um, uh, us as coaches to that standard. And so the, the opportunity to learn from a guy like KR um, is just incredible, you know, and, and then you, you package that with being able to learn from coach Fife on the other side uh, with basketball. And um, that that's just, I mean, talk about landing in a lucky spot for myself. Um, and, and the thing that I really appreciated over these, these, you know, two or three years here since I've taken over is that um, KR is, is a guy that if I have any questions, if I need any help with anything, if I, you know, just want to run something by him, uh, he's a phone call away and, um, and he's always there to help. And, and he always wants to, the the best thing about it is he always wants to help, but he never tries to step on your toes. And, and I think that can be kind of hard for guys, especially guys that have dedicated their entire life to this. I mean, the, the, the reason they dedicated their entire life to it is because they're so passionate about it. Um, and, and sometimes it can be hard for those guys to, to step away and not be overly involved. And, um, and KR has, has done an incredible job of being there whenever we need him um, w- without trying to step on anybody's toes. And I, I really appreciate that. You know, it makes it a lot of easier to lead um, w- when when that's the case. So uh, very fortunate, very lucky to have KR um, around and, and still here to, to talk to and uh, and run ideas off of. And, and, and it's just, uh, again, I'm very fortunate to be in the spot that I am um, having coached under uh, KR. Um, and then let's talk, um, how, the, how are the numbers there over at Clarkson? How's it, how's the, um, numbers over there? The, um, I mean, how's the numbers over there? Yeah. So uh, I kind of mentioned it a little bit ago, but our, our numbers, I think look good. I mean, you always want to get more kids out, but we'll be probably close to 70 at the varsity level. Um, we're in the forties, I think at our JV level and, and uh, I'm hoping in the fifties with our freshmen and then. We don't know exactly our seventh and eighth grade numbers until those kids start showing up here um, in a in a month or so. But um, we're expecting about seventy at at our seventh and eighth grade levels too. So um, we feel really good about where our numbers are. And again, that being said, we're always trying to to get more kids into football um, because I I know that football regardless of the, the wins and losses or the, the things that they do on the field. I know that football is going to change their life and it's going to change their life for the better. They're going to learn things They're they're, they're going to uh, form friendships and bonds that are going to last a lifetime. Uh, there, there's, you know, the dealing with adversity and, and how to, how to work together as a team to achieve goals. And there, there's just so much that football provides that I think, um, you know, it, the kids that get this experience are, are very fortunate. Um, and it's something that I hope we can get more kids involved with because uh, I really do believe that it is something that will help them, uh, you know, for the rest of their life and, and something that they will appreciate for the rest of their life. So um, our numbers are good, but we're always hoping to, to try and get more kids involved. Any changes on the uniforms at all? I mean, I know I know the wing helmets are still are going to stay, but um, any changes to the uniforms at all? 
Um, yeah, the, the winged helmet is still here. There's, there's a few coaches that have, have debated whether or not we should change that. I am kind of reluctant to change the history there with the, with the winged helmet. Um, we do have some new uniforms that, that we've, uh, hopefully will be in, in time for week one. We're still kind of waiting on Nike to deliver those. So we may have to wait a little bit. Um, and, and we did change up the uh, the helmet slightly. It's got a matte finish to it. So we went with a little bit different look, but it's still the same uh, winged helmet that we've been wearing. So, um, so yeah, we'll have some some uniform changes that we're, we're hoping to debut week one. And if not week one, then then hopefully week two or three. I love the all white combo you guys have. I think it's I think that's very clean. I love that all white look. I know a lot of people in Clarkson. You look at the blue blue and then the blue yellow look. You know what I mean? Like I know my brother always liked when you guys went blue yellow. You know blue maze. You know what I mean? That always was a good look for you guys. It was like perfect description of Clarkston. You know. <laughs> yeah, we we uh, that's something that we'd like to. We want to be able to kind of mix and match a little bit with our uniform. Just that, you know, kids like that stuff. They they like being able to uh, wear different uniform combinations and stuff. So um, that's something that we're hoping to be able to do. And before I let you go, Coach, um, any message you want to say to OA Nation um, as we head forward to the season beginning? Uh, I I just uh, appreciate you having me on here today. And, um you know, I, I know this is about, I think you're 17 or 18 for me here at Clarkson and, and you've been a part of, of all of those years over at Lake Orion. And, um, you know, it, it's been a great rivalry between Clarkson and Lake Orion. And, uh, we love when, when we see you guys and, and get an opportunity to play you guys. And it's been a, uh, a respected rivalry, which is important too. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a great high school rivalry. Um, and, and you and your brother are staples over there at Lake Orion. So, um, thank you for having me on today. Um, um, one more, one more question. Um, your expect, what is the expectation this year over at Clarkson this year? Well, our expectations, I don't think they ever change. And I hope they never change, which is we want to win the OAA red. It starts there. Um, and anytime you win the OAA red, you're as good as anybody um, in the state. And then from there, it's it's go on and win a district. And once you win that district, it's go win the regional. And then it's go win a semifinal game and get to the state championship game and, and, and hopefully win that one. So our, our expectations here um, they, they're, they never changed. Um, I think that's always been our goal is, um, like I said, win the league, win a district, win a regional, go win a state championship. And, um, and, and it, that's tough to do. It's tough to win the OA red. Uh, it's tough to win a district with the teams around here. And it's tough to win a regional, really tough to win a regional. And it's really hard to win a state championship in division one. Um, but those are always our goals. And, and, and we feel like, um, we feel like we're always close, you know, last year, um, we, we were close, you know, we were, we were right there with the teams that, that went and played for the state championship. And the year before that we were close. And so, um, close is good, but we want to, we want to get over that hump and, um, and get back to Ford field and hopefully win another state championship. Clarkson coach, Kurt Rich, uh, um, Justin Pintar here. Thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. I will see you at media day. Thanks, Sammy. Take care, buddy. God bless. You too. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest around the OAA. Take care. God bless, and I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care, and I will see you all next week. God bless all.